All right, so I was about to go on a mission and the spirit was like, it's raining. And the spirit thought that was funny. I thought it was funny, but I, I don't know. There's just something about me. If I'm not doing something, I'm like, gotta be someone I can help here. It's, I don't like to sit still. And I mostly don't wear white really for many reasons. One is because the Holy Spirit was grieved. So I had to express that. And two, it's hard to keep clean. And I always looked at it as people that were wearing white, they focused too much on keeping it clean than actually going out there and helping people and getting it dirty. So I haven't really worn too much white, but scripture says I'm supposed to and all that. And it's cool to wear white. I don't have a problem with it. But <clears throat> I was sitting there praying. I was like, okay, how to handle this, how to handle this, how to handle this. People don't really want answers. I've noticed that. Answers make people upset <laughs> because they don't think like God. So I'm like, the problem is how are you gonna prevent more shootings? Shootings happen all the time across the world. When you take the Bible out of schools and you take God out of the equation, people no longer have a reason to believe that they're going to be held accountable for their actions. So then it becomes they can do whatever they want. And then you have a child who is rejected. That turns into anger and that anger starts growing. And these children are seeing examples of, okay, I don't want to live on this earth anymore, but I'm so angry. I want to take as many people as I can with me. And that's not how I think, but that's how these children are thinking. And I'm looking at a world with sex trafficking going on, people getting shot every single day. People, children starving. I'm looking at this expansively. And I was thinking, I was like, what if Valentine's Day, all my people bought cards just for three people in their life that they knew were hurting, that were either going through some hard times. And that card just said, happy Valentine's Day. Love Jesus Christ. So I've surveyed the war and why we're outnumbered is because we're not going out and trying to prevent it from happening. Gun control is not going to work. Gun control is going to lead somebody to find something worse. Also, the people that really, really want guns to carry things out like this are going to find a way and they want guns for a reason. The key is to make them not want guns. The scripture says, teach your little ones about God and his ways while they are little and they will not depart from it. It has to start with the children. There are evil people on this planet. I've had to come to terms with it. That's what it is. <clears throat> now, in this shooting, I could see God's hand all over it, directing and stopping it. There's a lot of things that I don't discuss because People simply aren't ready for the answers. But I will say this, it wasn't God that did it.
And I, I usually don't address things like this, but the spirit was like, just address it. Now, the fact that Jesus Christ resurrected tells you life after death on this earth is not only possible, but a certainty. The fact that the scripture says that Elijah had to come before the Messiah tells you, well, if Elijah lived before Jesus, so to speak, which didn't, but that you have the ability to not reincarnate. It's just that you always exist. Whether you're going to exist in a human being or an animal is based on are you responsible enough to exist in a human being. Being in a human being is a privilege. That makes you automatically a child of God. Whether you accept the rules to live under God's house, God's roof, so to speak, and be his son, his daughter, that's different than being a child. Child just means you're a product of God, given. A son or a daughter means you have a relationship. And Jesus said, well, John the Baptist, that was Elijah. That's in the scripture. So Jesus is already confirming, not reincarnation, just the fact that spirits come back to life. Jesus said she's not dead, she's just sleeping. So, <clears throat> You have to take the Bible as your absolute truth. And from there, build your life on it. And you can lie to yourself all you want. I can say that it's not raining outside. If I walk outside, I'm still going to get wet. Really what needs to happen is God's people need to understand that they are his angels. And so many people have asked me, they've been like, are you an angel? Like, <laughs> one person was like, I thought I hallucinated you. And I'm like, they're like, what's your name? And I was like, Michael, like the archangel. Because I've been in the perfect places at the perfect time with the perfect words. And people haven't been able to really... Um, comprehend it but they never forget it so until you're giving the world proof that jesus christ exists and is god and is still alive what are they going to believe people need to stop looking at their lives as I don't want to lose this. I'm worried about this. You're worried about things that really hold no value to your happiness. If all of God's people decided, I'm not going to buy more stuff for me. One TV is enough for me. I actually live in luxury compared to the rest of the world. I'm going to take this money and feed people in other countries. I'm going to fund this. I'm going to fund that. And they derived their pleasure from pleasing God. No one would be able to take that away from you. Because it would be the scripture. The joy of the Lord is my strength. When you make the Holy Spirit happy, you become happy. If you grieve the Holy Spirit, you grieve. So... The answers have been very, very simple. It's just nobody has wanted to say, you know what? The inevitable truth is there is intelligent design. And all of these people seem to have encounters with Jesus Christ. And 
They believe. There might be something to this. I'm making sure I'm getting these words right from the spirit. Oh, yeah. So remember, though, I'm crazy and I'm insane. Remember that. Now, I've had this kind of ongoing challenge with the world. And I was like, you live like there's no God. You live like you're in control. You live like you're not going to answer to him. You live your entire life lying to yourself and in denial. And I'm crazy. Well, yeah, that's your truth. Actually, the heavens testify. Why do you think the stars are set apart so much? Tell me. It has nothing to do with gravity. The stars are set apart because they're actually attracted to each other. And if they don't have something holding them away from each other, they will combine with each other. Do you know what will happen if that happens? Do you know why they're attracted to each other? It's not gravity. Tell me. Another question I have that no one's been able to answer. How is it a visual hallucination if you see it outside of your mind? Let's go further. How come when people smoke meth, they see skulls or shadow people, but they see it? (laughs) How come you can go to healing conferences, say the name of Jesus Christ and people get healed? The visual evidence is before everyone. The physical evidence is before everyone. Feelings of joy and excitement. Ask a Christian. Ask one that actually speaks in tongues what happens, how it feels. So there's a lot to me and what I want people to understand is you have to take an active role in your life and your happiness by being where you need to be, saying what you need to say, and you have to develop a true way of life. And Ecclesiastes says there is no point to life. And this is from the wisest man in the Bible who had money, wives, riches, prestige. And the conclusion the wisest man in the Bible came to, and I know him, his name is Peter. Back then it was Solomon. There is no point to life except to fear and worship God.
Do not try and control things you have no ability to control. Walk in your purpose. Be who you are. Be an angel. I love you.